Greetings and felicitations. Hip hip hurrah, tally ho. Wow, Solo, a Star Wars story. I mean, this is one that we were looking forward to on so many levels. I'm here, Nayar. And I'm Kavora. And we have our guest, Lee Red 2, joining us. Thanks for having me again, guys. Excited to talk about some Star Wars. I mean, we were talking earlier about the anticipation for this movie and the build-up for it, because it spoke about characters that we knew for virtually our whole lives. What did you think about the build-up for it, Lee? Um, you know, for me, it was, uh, of course, the excitement's there. There's a little bit of anxiety, too. You know, you have these characters that uh, the the backstory that's in your head is going to be hard to match. And I think that's one of the things that Solo uh, had to know going in uh, as they're making this movie, that it's going to be hard to match what we were anticipating. Yeah, it was exciting. Uh, it was the timing of it when it came out was odd. It came out less than six months from a previous Star Wars movie, and it was not connected to the other ones. I mean, how did, what was your audience reaction going into that? Did you find that some people, the average person that goes to the movies that's not hardcore Star Wars fans, did they notice that it's not connected to the rest of the Skywalker saga directly? I actually went in with some friends uh, to watch that movie, and it was funny, uh, them trying to follow along and uh, couldn't really couldn't really do so because you know you you almost expect it in their mind is this directly connected to Rogue One that came out shortly uh, around the t- same time period or is it more of the uh, new movies the new trilogy co- trilogy coming out uh, and and it's always fun trying to put these movies where they belong for somebody that has no clue what's going on in Star Wars it's a comical co- conversation each and every time right. And it was released May 25th, 2018. I think the fact that bringing Star Wars movies back to being released in May, that in itself was fun. Yeah, definitely for me. You know, my, my birthday's uh, in May, so in the movies when they came out, it was almost always like this little birthday present, uh, you know, in my in my world just for me. Yeah. So anytime we get a May Star Wars movie, it's it's special for me. Well, and because it was close to, you know, May the 4th be with you, and because all the, you know, they usually try to release the big blockbuster movies in May. Yeah, I miss it. I miss it. I, you know, I, to, just to be honest, I prefer the May release to the December releases. Yeah, for Star Wars movies, definitely. Just because we've been trained that way for so long. So we look at the details of the movie. It was produced by Lucasfilm, directed by Ron Howard. It's the second Star Wars anthology film, so that's separate from the Skywalker saga, produced by Kathleen Kennedy, Allison Schemer, and Simon Emanuel, written by Jonathan Kasten and Loris Kasten. Wow, quite a few stars there. There are some heavy hitters. Alden Inanarek, Woody Harrelson, Amelia Clark, Donald Glover, Thandie Newton, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Junis Sutamo and Paul Batali. Now we did have some elements of John Williams theme music in there, but now we have the music by John Powell. Budget was two hundred and seventy five to three hundred million, and in the box office it took in three hundred and ninety three million. So let's talk about the cast. What did you think about the casting of Han Solo? Baby doll? I thought that um, it, it was good. I mean, I mean, even though this, so this guy playing Han Solo looks nothing like Harrison Ford, so you kind of have to think of him as as a new Han Solo. Mm-hmm. And, and the thing is, I mean, Solo was always one of my favorite characters, so to see this new guy was kind of it was a little bit jarring, but but he did a good job. Yeah, and of course, you know, Lando Calrissian was great. He was you know the one who who stole the movie, and. Um, and the rest of the cast was good. It was great seeing Woody Harrelson in this because he, he was already a star, and, and I thought he did great in this part. Yeah, Lee? Uh, you know, the Han Solo was tough. It was, it was just really tough. You can't have uh, Han Solo without Harrison Ford. Uh, it's just it's just one of those things. So it was hard getting over that. I think, as, as she said, it, it, probably the best way to look at it is if you take it in as a whole new character – and just try to take it in for what it is from there. It made it a little bit easier. Donald Glover, in my opinion, was absolutely amazing. 
Uh, I really enjoyed watching him. Oh, I I agree. I as soon as I walked, as soon as I saw that guy in the ads, I said, "This casting of him is incredible." I love. Man, it almost makes me wish it was a Lando movie. <laughs> yeah, and um, and now being fans of the expanded universe, you know, movies like this are kind of hard for us old timers because we've been taught the story of Lando and Han a little bit differently. We've been taught that the Sabak cards are different. They're more like laser light. They're not physical playing cards. So we have to kind of erase that expanded universe stories and embrace now this new canon. As I said, it's almost like it's a, a story the Jedi don't like to tell, right? Yeah, that's a way of looking at it. What about visually? How did you feel that it visually stuck in with the rest of the Star Wars movies, Lee? There were some scenes that uh, they're, they're starting to pick out some stuff and technology is catching up. That you know, It's just some, some stunning stuff. Uh, I, I don't think, and I don't know how the budgets compare just offhand, I don't think it compared to Rogue One and Last Jedi visually, but there's still some really good stuff that was going on for sure. There were some scenes uh, that were breathtaking. I, I thought the, the scenes were good visually. Um, I'm the, going by our rewatch, because we watched the, the three prequel movies and then this one, and, and so I think this one it, it seems a lot more laid back compared to the other three because they, they had... They were so full. They had so much scenery, so much going on. And this one had a little less going on, but, but still enough action to keep you interested. And, um, I, I mean, it, it was a good relief to me to, to see something that was a little less busy, but, you know, but still could, could hold up. That's, that's a good point. Solid point. I think one of the things that, uh, and I, and I think I mentioned this and we were talking about the prequels. I generally try to like movies and I generally try to like anything Star Wars. Uh, the, but it, so it, I don't want to sound too negative, but two visual scenes that sort of stuck with me is the lady proxy scene, uh, and then the, uh, the heist scene on the train. To me, those just look like something I've seen before. Um, and maybe it's like the Captain America sequences or other stuff that I've seen in other movies, but it just didn't, it didn't seem like it was original. It felt like a, a, a Western train robbery. I mean, and, and we have to be realistic. This movie, they, Word got out that this was a heist movie. They're trying to yeah. break away from the the epic saga of Star Wars, but bringing it down to a, a story of Han and how he became to be Han Solo. So they kind of had to do what Star Trek did and deviate from the big picture in order to build up characters on a smaller scale. So, I mean... If, to a degree, we walked into it knowing that it was not, it was part of an epic saga, but it in itself was not going to be epic. Yes, yeah. This is the first Star Wars film that is in the official canon order that doesn't mention the Jedi or the Jedi Knights. In fact, the only time we see a lightsaber is the hologram of Darth Maul. So, so that makes it different than the other Star Wars movies. Definitely, no, but I, I think, oddly enough, it didn't seem to be missing too much. You know, I know that there's some cl complaints about it, but I think the uh, other stuff that's included, the space, the droids, uh, the lasers, uh, it still felt like Star Wars. And, and I love some of the uh, the cookies they threw in this movie uh, were enough to make me uh, chuckle or at least giggle at times. You know, so there's some really, really uh, smart ways to throw a little homage here and there. I had a fun time seeing it. I mean, I viewed it as just, just a feel-good, fun movie. Let's talk about some of those cookies and Easter eggs. What did you notice? Well, uh, the Beckett killing Aura Singh was one of the things that stepped out with me first. I thought that was uh, the way they, they mentioned something happening off screen that, that, of course, connects to so much of the other lore and, and, and cartoons and movies. Uh, that caught my ear and thought was pretty pretty funny. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, uh, of course, the uh, Lando's what would become Lando's uh, Return of the Jedi costume in Jabba's palace. Seeing that on screen again was, was pretty cool. Yes. Oh, the little helmet with the yeah. thing over his face. Yeah. Yes, yes. And you know, the conjecture is that that's a disguise that's being stored on the Millennium Falcon. And we know that the new modern 
Marvel comics are considered canon, and that disguise is used in the comics as well. So that's one thing that I really like about the modern Star Wars universe is that they're intersecting everything. Everything matters. All the little details are there. For diehard fans, it just makes scenes like that even more fun. It it it, it does this. It, it builds the epic, as you mentioned, and it just makes it to where uh, everything goes together. I, I enjoy that. New from Solo, a Star Wars story. Light up the action with the Han Solo Blaster. Cover long ranges with the Kira Blaster. And lay down cover with the Chewbacca Blaster. With glow-in-the-dark glow strike darts. New Solo, a Star Wars story. Nerf glow strike blasters. Each blaster sold separately. So what, what did you think about L3? It was a... Well, we've seen so many different personalities with droids. And this was just a take on another personality it's something that i didn't expect but star wars to me is always super visual i think it's one of the the grand masterpieces in all of science fiction that they constantly raise the bar for how things look either the special effects the mechanics the costume design and you have a robot a droid that looks like it's in the star wars universe but it has enough differences on it that is, she's refreshingly new. So I like the character just because it fit, but it was different. It's a different personality for um, for Star Wars. So so they didn't repeat themselves with this. They came up with it with completely different droid personality, which was wonderful. Yeah, I, I liked it as well. I thought it was, uh, thought it was one of the uh, bright points of the movie. The The interaction with Lando was great, and the humor with her was great. I, I agree, and I think it's one of the things too. The uh, how they, what, what's the right word I'm looking for? How they make the droids become human has been a theme since the first New Hope. Uh, you know, when we get to the cantina scene, uh, and, and it seems like they continually build that. Uh, and, and this idea of, of humanity and the droids, uh, which which I love the way they keep playing on and building on. Yes. Uh, and, and seeing all the different droids that were freed as well. And going back to the Wookiees, seeing more Wookiees being freed. I mean, this is, we have Junus was coming back to reprise his role as Chewbacca. And we know that he and Peter Mayhew had a wonderful relationship working together. That this actor, he took the torch from Peter Mayhew with his blessing and Peter Mayhew coached them on it. So he delivered a very memorable and accurate display of how Chewbacca would react in situations. I loved the the meeting of how they met each other and how they built the friendship. Uh, th- that that meeting scene with Han and Chewie, uh, it's close to what, what I've heard and what I've read and some of the expanded stuff. But it was, but it was interestingly, uh, it, it, it's, it's fresh enough. So I thought that was pretty cool. They took something that was old and uh, turned it just a little bit. Making Han say that he he speaks uh, Wookiee, which we knew because Han could always understand Chewie. So it was great to see this one where Han actually does the the growl and and Chewie understands him. Yeah, I think uh, so. What about this? I, my my favorite scenes are probably the poker scenes with Lando and Han. Uh, they were exciting. Exciting poker, yes, and seeing who can cheat the best. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's 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 a great point, and I like the fact that uh, you know, we know that Han's gonna win the win the ship. So the actual first loss was surprising to me. Like I I kept thinking that we were gonna see Han. This is when Han wins the Millennium Falcon, and he didn't. Uh, and that was pretty interesting. And that being said, let's talk about the Falcon. We notice that Lando keeps it in perfect condition. Doesn't last long, does it? <laughs> and also, I. I did like the aspect that that little notch in front was an escape pod. Now, for years, uh, I used to play the West End Games role-playing game, and there were a variety of technical breakdowns for various ships. And that brought out that that little notch was used for carrying cargo. So they've kind of erased that aspect of what the notch was for. And now... It was an escape pod that was an add-on to the ship that Lando purchased that Han ended up losing and never replacing. That totally changed the aesthetic of the ship. Totally, totally. 
And it makes you makes you also uh, it it may play into some of the story. You know, when um, how many times has Han had to smuggle himself inside the ship? Where maybe if he had an escape pod, that wouldn't have been the choice. Mm Hmm. So, what else would you say uh, were some of your favorite scenes from the movie? So, I, I think the poker scenes were my favorite. <laughs> Junker. Sure, hope your hand's better than his. Why don't you worry about your own hand? Why don't I do this? <laughs> I'm not giving you Chewbacca. Got Han Solo? Done. Collect all 12 exclusive trading cards and try a new movie-inspired menu only at Denny's. Solo, a Star Wars story, in theaters May 25th. Uh, I think going through the Kessel Run, there was some visual stuff that was that was really stunning, really good. And that answers what exactly the Kessel one Run was. Yes, yes it did, yes it did. And we got to see that on screen as well. I think, uh, you know, the chess scene was, was pretty cool too. Another one of those little Easter eggs. Uh, where Beckett and Chewie are playing chess, uh, just just is the nostalgia that I guess we're going in looking for. Totally. Another thing that was unique uh, that we're looking at that was harkens back to other episodes. If you recall that there was a promotional video or a recruitment video near the beginning of the movie to join the Empire, and it actually had the Imperial March playing in the recruitment <laughs> video. So now that's that's like that's awesome. so that's saying that the Imperial March is not just theatric music for us, it's an in universe theme. How cool was that? The, yes, I th- I thought that was amazing. It was brilliant. Uh and, and it and it hit home right away. Fur- further demonstrates the brilliance of John Williams. I mean he is uh he is the Mozart of our era in my opinion. Oh, no doubt about it. His work is amazing. Now, what would you think about Amelia Clark's performance in this? Uh, you know, the the funny thing is how long it took me to realize who she was. I actually, you know, I'm, I'm different than a lot of fans. When I go to the, these uh, the Star Wars releases, I stay off the Internet. I, I try not to look at trailers. I try not to read anything about it. I want to take it in for what it is. Uh, so, you, you know, as I was watching it, I was like, man, I know who that is, but I can't place it. It took me a good little bit of the movie before I realized where I recognized her from, which, of course, is the Game of Thrones, right? Yeah. She looks so different as a brunette, and that's oh, what she is God. in real life. Yes, yes. Uh, I thought she did a good job, an excellent job. Uh, you know, you, you you could see the uh, the heartbreak it play, play out and, and played it out fairly well. Sort of reminded me of a little bit of Casablanca. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the charms we have to look at in this movie, I mean, it's not part of the massive epic saga. It's an individual story. And so when we look at it for what it is and accept it for what it is, we start seeing, instead of the original idea of George Lucas making it his movies something like the serials of the 1930s and 40s, well, this is more like a love story or an, a a com- a complete drama from that time period. So when we think about it in that sort, it actually is more enjoyable. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, as, as a fandom and me in particular, I think the more we take things for what they are, the happier we're going to be. And, and I think you can go into Solo expecting it to be Empire, and you're going to be disappointed. Uh, or you can go in and, and watch a movie about about a, a, a character in a new light and be entertained, but uh, which I choose to do the, do the latter. And I did like the fact that Lando mentioned Sharu, and we look at different things. Uh, there was a crystal skull on a desk. These are all references to the Lando books that came out in the 1980s. So what what's now considered the Legend series, all, all the books that are not produced by Disney going forward, it's nice to see that they're tipping the hat to us fans that that love all that old school stuff. Definitely, and I, and, I, and I think you know there's 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 an attempt going on, and and I think Lucas you know, or they're in a they're in a bind where they're trying to come up with fresh stuff, 
But every time they try to come up with too fresh stuff, people are going to complain that it's that it's not the old stuff. And if they stay too close to the old stuff, you know, it's it's too different. Uh, so, like I said, we we need to relax and love the Easter eggs when they come and and enjoy enjoy the movies for what they are when they're coming out. Yeah. So, so do you think that the Beckett character was a, a a role model for Han in his later years? Like maybe he thought back about him and well, either wanted to be like him or didn't want to be like him. I, I don't know if it was a role model as much as it was just a lesson, a life lesson, you know, where uh, at the end, you know, he's got to shoot first. And, and I think that's something that he didn't want to be and he didn't want to be like Beckett. But that's the kind of world that, that he's living in. Yeah, yeah, someone from his world, maybe someone he could have been, but he still wanted to be more moral than that. I think that's a good way of putting it, which makes his redemption, uh, you know, later on in the Star Wars uh, epic make even more sense yeah so overall how did you feel about the movie and how do you feel it fit into the star wars universe oh man overall it was entertaining i i didn't you know i wouldn't put it up there with the others uh as far as on the original trilogy it's 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 not the same type of movie it's an entertaining movie it's a good movie um i i don't i think it fits in the wider sense uh, but as you mentioned, I don't think it was really intended to fit. I think it's. I think they used the term standalone uh, on purpose to say, you know, here's something in the universe to go stand by itself and you can take in. And, and, and it's a good entertaining movie. Cutie Pie? I enjoyed the movie. I, I, I mean, yes, it, it wasn't as epic as the others. And um, so, so just for a separate standalone movie, it, it was a good story. And I did appreciate the fact that it fleshed out the characters that we know and love. It fit into the Star Wars universe, and it answered questions that we've had for years. Well, awesome review of Solo. We invite everyone to tune in next time as we discuss Star Wars Rogue One. Thank you so much for joining us. Please continue to follow and interact with us on both Facebook and Twitter. If you use Apple IIe, Commodore 64, or Tandy computers, find us on your bulletin board system. Your five-star feedback is always welcome. Until next time, live long and may the Force be with you. Nanu Nanu. Thanks for listening. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and join our Facebook group. Live long and may the force be with you. Nanu Nanu. Nanu.